everyone, it's Cece here and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a cute little wall hanging like this one which is designed for you to hang up your photos or Polaroids and it's so quick and easy to make you should be able to make it in just about 10 minutes. So the idea of this wall hanging is that you've got these areas here where you can grab a little photo and just come along and find a spot that you like with a little mini peg and peg it onto the wall hanging and it's a really really cute way to display your photos up on a wall. So for the materials that you'll need for this project, the best thing is that you can kind of use whatever you have lying around the house. So I've used a five millimeter single strand twisted cotton cord, but you could use any cord that you have really. And I've also used two bits of bow for the top and the bottom here, but you could also use a piece of stick from the garden or some driftwood, just whatever you really like the look of. You can essentially make this piece a little bit bigger as well if you like. So you could make something that's a bit wider so you could display more photos and you could also do it either um, thinner or longer as well so you've got more surface area to pin stuff onto if you like. So I'll leave a list of all the materials that you'll need in the description below and I'll also mention what you'll need as we're going through the project throughout the video. So to start I'm just grabbing my 30 centimeter piece of dowel and hooking it up with these hooks here on a clothes hanger to work on the dowel and I'm taking my first two meter cord and I'm just bringing the two ends together and using them to find the center point so I'm folding the cord in half and then with this center loop here I'm taking that over the dowel to create a lark's head knot so I've just attached that cord to the dowel like so. And I just need to repeat that with all of the two meter cords. So again, I'm folding my next cord in half and then using the loop at the center to create a lark's head knot around the dowel. So depending on how long your dowel is will depend on how many cords that you're going to attach. But I am attaching 10 cords today to my 30 centimeter piece of dowel. So you want to make sure that the number of cords you're attaching to your dowel is an even number of cords. And what you also need to do is just group these cords in groups of two with a little bit of a gap in between each group of two cords. So you can see here I've got my next group of two cords with a gap in between. So now I have all 10 of my cords attached to the dowel using the lark's head and I've grouped them into groups of two and now I'm just going to grab this group of cords and create a square knot using these four cords here. And then I'll move on to the next group of cords and create a square knot with these four cords. And then again, moving on to the next group of four and creating a square knot. And you just wanna do that with each group on the dowel. And if you don't know how to create a square knot, I do have a tutorial available online. So make sure you check that one out. I'll leave the link in the description below. So now that that's all done, we're going to create a second row of square knots, which sits underneath these other square knots up here. So I'm just grabbing two cords from one square knot and two cords from the adjacent square knot and I'm using these four cords to create a square knot underneath. You also want to leave a bit of a gap between this square knot and the square knots above it so this will just leave room for us to attach our photos to the gap there. And so now I'm then going to create another square knot 
and I'm just using the next four chords over and I want to line up that square knot so it sits level with the square knot that I made previously. So you want this to be kind of as straight as you can get it. Um, you may wish to use a ruler and make your gaps all exactly perfect, but in this circumstance, I'm just kind of eyeing it off as best I can and making it look straight. And so just continuing across the length of the dowel, I'm taking every group of four chords and creating a square knot with those four chords. So because I have 10 strings, I'll be left with four square knots on my second row like so. And now what we've created is essentially just an alternating square knot pattern. This last square knot here looks a little bit lower than the others, so I'm just gonna quickly adjust it here. And so now we just wanna create another row of square knots. And so I'm starting with the first four chords on the left here and creating a square knot with these four. And I just wanna make sure that I'm creating the same sized gap between this square knot and the row of square knots above it. So I'm trying to match the gap here with the other gap that I made earlier so that it sits nice and even. And so now just moving on to the next four chords in the group and I'm going to create a square knot with these four chords. And again, just wanting to make sure that this gap looks the same size as the gap above it. Just making sure that my square knots all sit in a nice straight line. So now I'm moving on to the next four chords in the group and creating another square knot. And I'm just going to create a square knot with every group of four chords until I have a full row of square knots here as well. So you can probably see just by looking at this row that it's a little bit wonky. So it's not straight, it's getting lower towards the right hand side. I'm just going to undo these square knots slightly and move them up so I can create a straighter row for my last row here that I just made. Alrighty, that's looking a lot better now. And so essentially we're just going to repeat this same pattern over and over again, creating this alternating square knot pattern for the full length of our piece here. Alrighty, so now I have finished all of my knotting for this part and I've done a total of seven rows of square knots here. And now I'm just going to take my second piece of dowel and attach it to the bottom of the piece here. And to do that, I'm just going to create a double half hitch knot around the dowel using every single cord I have here in the piece. So you can see I'm holding the dowel in front of the piece and then wrapping the cord around the dowel, pulling it through and then pulling it nice and tight. And I'm doing that twice for each string. So I'm just working my way through every single string and creating a double half hitch knot. Now, if you don't know how to create a double half hitch knot, I do have a tutorial video available online, so make sure you check that one out. I'll leave a link for it in the description below.
You also want to make sure that you're pulling your strings through so that the dowel is sitting right under that last square knot. So you don't want to leave too much of a gap in between the square knot and the double half hitch knot on the dowel. So now I've attached all the strings to the dowel and I'm just going to fill in the gaps in between the cords now using some more cord. So I've got some 50 centimeter lengths of cord that I'm folding in half and then wrapping around the dowel using a lark's head knot. So I'm just going to continue to wrap these 50 centimeter pieces of cord around the dowel using a lark's head knot until all of these little gaps are filled in. And I believe for myself in between each gap, I've put about four new cords, but depending on the size of the string that you're using, you may need more or less. It's also a nice idea to pull the Lux head knots really nice and tight so that they stay in place and don't come undone. Alrighty, so now all the gaps are filled in with that extra cord that I've added. And so we're ready for the next step, which is to attach a cord at the top for a hanging cord. So I've just got a 30 centimeter piece of cord here that I have tied two ends together. So I've made a loop essentially that's tied together. And then I'm just going to take the loop end and then open up these center two cords that are attached to the top of the dowel here. And I'm going to feed the loop through the middle of those two cords. And then I'm going to grab that knot and I'm going to pop it through the loop and then pull on that knot so it's sitting at the top. And so essentially I've just created a bit of a lark's head knot around the dowel to attach this little loop in place like so. And so now I can use that to hang up my picture hanger. The only thing left to do now is to trim the ends so they're all the same length, pop on your photos and hang it up on the wall. It should look a little something like this. So there you go guys, that's how you make your very own wall hanging to display your photos on. I really hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial and you'll give it a go for yourself at home. Thank you so much for watching and here's to finding our peace and creativity. Mm -hmm.